Okay, hello everybody and welcome to today's event. I'm Jason Gumpert from msdynamicsworld.com and I'm joined today by Andrew Pruitt of IBIS, a Sonata software company, uh, for a new session exploring uh, brick and click for Dynamics AX and uh, the concept of blending in-store and digital commerce. As we get started, please know that you can add your feedback and ask questions at any point throughout today's event using the Q&A block you should see to the right of the main presentation window. I know Andrew will uh, plan to leave time uh, at various points for questions this hour. And without further delay, please allow me to uh, welcome Andrew to start things off. All right. So hopefully everybody can hear me all right. Uh, and I wanted to thank you, first of all, for uh, sharing your time with us this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. I appreciate it. Um, what we're going to do is go through a little bit of a background about Sonata and then also IBIS, which is a wholly owned U.S. subsidiary of the larger company, a publicly traded company, Sonata, uh, and then go through our offering, which we call Brick and Click. Uh, and we'll go into more details about that in just a moment. Uh, to tell you a little bit about myself before I uh, wound up or found myself in the Dynamics AX world, I have about uh, 10 years of retail experience, including uh, retail management uh, with the Fortune uh, 100 retailer here in the U.S. Uh, I used to run a $32 million business with a number of people and all the adventures and good times that come with that. Uh, and now I find myself uh, on the software side uh, working with the team here at Ibis Sonata, uh, putting together really a very good package uh, to bring people into the digital age. So without uh, ado here, we'll go through our slides and then we'll uh, actually transition to a live presentation of the uh, system itself. Uh, and we're going to walk through a short um, scenario with a person named Max, uh, and we're going to see how he can transition from his mobile device uh, to his desktop and then actually into the physical store itself. We'll, bring, we'll actually end up bringing up or displaying the uh, retail uh, MPAWS, or modern point of sale system, that's offered through Microsoft. Uh, so that's a little bit about me, and then we'll go through some of the details here. So for Sonata, and a brief uh, introduction, as I mentioned, a large publicly traded company actually based out of Bangalore, India, but they actually have a worldwide presence. Uh, I'm not going to read through all of the minute details on every single one of these slides because I think the most important thing about this discussion is actually uh, the demonstration, and so we want to get to that. Uh, but if you take a second, you notice the slides. Um, it's a very large company, as I said. It's been highly successful. It's been around for several years many, many years actually, <clears throat> and is really a, a fully uh, vested partner in a Microsoft ecosystem and as a Microsoft partner. So really Sonata has the ability to offer uh, solutions in a number of marketplaces or a number of verticals, depending on how you describe it. But our particular discussion today is going to be around uh, retail and how you can really move a business from the traditional brick and mortar store to an online presence and then beyond that, what we all typically, at least these days, in the last, I'd say, 10 years, have transitioned to, which is really the mobile world, where you're actually able to interact with uh, customers and interact with other businesses and do all those things uh, that traditionally you either had to do in the store or on your desktop, uh, but now we actually do uh, through our mobile devices. And this is where we really get into the uh, digital transformation that's going on within the, within the business world. Okay, so a little bit about Sonata Ibis. Again, a uh, long-standing company created in 1986 and been public since, uh, I guess, the last 10 years or so, um, but really dedicated towards bringing other companies uh, into the digital world and then succeeding with them. Uh, we look at uh, opportunities uh, as, as just that. And when we go into a business in order to bring them up to speed, in order to do an implementation of Dynamics AX, or provide us other consulting services, we really want to be partners for the long term. We want them to succeed, uh, and some, sometimes maybe even more than they do, uh, and we really look to succeed together. Now, we have a vast ar uh, array of um, experience, including several thousand um, Dynamics resources, which are located throughout the world, uh, and I'll show you a map in just a moment to show you where we are uh, physically located. Okay. So I'm actually speaking to you from the Atlanta Development Center, which you see highlighted there actually in red, um, but we are actually a global company uh, spread out across the world uh, in, order, in order to serve our clients uh, in the best way that we can. Uh, so truly a global presence. Okay. And as far as our dynamics expertise, it's significant, uh, including industry-specific solutions for retail and distribution, and that's, I highlight that because that's what we're going to be talking about here in just a moment. 
Okay. Right. So into Brick and Click. So what Brick and Click really does is it combines uh, all of the information that you can get out of Dynamics AX and then uh, spreads that out so that we can actually ask, access it through our e-commerce solution and then also through a mobile device. So the, one of the best key features of this system is that we actually have a single view of the customer and we also have a single view of inventory. So if you're running 50, 60 stores, hundreds of stores, and you have multiple distribution centers, it can be very difficult, especially if you have non-integrated systems, in order to tell who's doing what and where and when, and what consumers, what consumer trends are actually picking up speed in one uh, location or region or another. Uh, through this system, you can actually see all of those things very readily. Uh, and we'll talk about our analytics offering uh, here shortly, also in a few moments. Okay. So um, again, as people move through this digital age, you're looking at uh, how customers make their decisions and what they're purchasing and how they're purchasing it. Um, most people will research online. In fact, better than half of 51% will research online what they're going to buy or purchase before they actually do it. Uh, as a personal example, I was in a retailer actually last night and I was looking at different jackets. It's finally turning fall here in Atlanta. Uh, and anyway, it was, I'm due, so I need to get a new jacket. Well, it turns out the particular retailer I was in has an application. I was able to go on their app and actually see that the jacket that they had actually came in multiple colors through their website, and it was actually not actually in the store. So I could have purchased it online, or what I eventually did is find a different product, but I was able to look at their entire inventory all through the mobile device. And I think as we move forward, uh, more and more people are going to expect that kind of uh, detail to be available to them on their, in their hand as they're walking through the store. So the, another key point there is that not only is that information available to me as a consumer, but it's also available to the associates that are in the store. And in, uh, uh, excuse me, associate empowerment and being able to provide all of the information that's needed uh, by the associates or customer service representatives or team members or whatever you care to call them, uh, but the, truly the employees within the store in order to provide that excellent customer service is another piece of what this system is really all about. Okay? So what does it mean to go digital? Just like it says here, it's the creation of a new business design blurs the line between digital and physical worlds. Of course, that's from Gartner. Um, but what it means to us is that Traditional retailing, in a sense, which is a brick and mortar store where a person would walk to get out of their car, go in, look at a number of things, maybe five different kinds of relatively the same t-shirts, and then make their decision there in order to purchase or not, or the amount to purchase or not, is really gone away. What's happening now is you have people that are doing their research online, they're taking their mobile devices as we talked about, and we cannot uh, discount the Amazon effect and the ability for people to have things shipped to their doorstep, in some cases, even on the same day. And what we, what we aim to do and what we hope to do and intend to do and ultimately will do is bring some of these companies into that digital age where they can actually provide all of those same services seamlessly through a centralized hub uh, of data and information, and that's where Dynamics AX uh, comes into the picture. Okay. So here are some of the decision points that we can go into for digital retailing. Uh, and again, it's all about bringing people into the current system um, or into the current uh, now in, in order to meet customers' expectations. Yeah. And again, uh, really offering the best of online and in-store. And I should say that this offering is actually available on the app source. Uh, so if you're on um, Microsoft uh, Consumer and have access to that, you can actually download, start, uh, and run your own test uh, system if you care to. All right, and then Omnichannel. So now we're going to start talking about the, um, the demonstrations that I'm going to walk through. Uh, the first one that we're going to actually, the first one that we are actually going to do uh, is what we call, um, what traditionally would be called uh, Omnichannel but now is being typically called unified commerce. And what happens here is that we're going to follow our friend Max, who I mentioned earlier. He's going to start off on his mobile device, he's going to trans and then he's going to transition to his desktop, and then ultimately he'll transition to the store. And so I'll be able to show you how he can interact, uh, Max can interact with the company through his mobile device and through his uh, desktop 
but then ultimately uh, we'll be able to talk about how the retailer is actually interacting with him. So these things move in two directions. It's not a, uh, just that the customer interacts with the retailer, it actually happens uh, both ways, uh, especially with all the data and analytics that are available um, by using a unified system. Okay, so I think we have just one or two more slides here and then we'll get into the actual demonstration. Yeah, and so what we've done is we've added much, much more uh, to the top, on top of uh, Dynamics by being a Microsoft Dynamics partner. And what this means is that you have all of your inventory control through Dynamics AX, but you also have integration into CRM where we're capturing all of the uh, customer's data and analytics in order to kind of pull those things together. And if you see at the bottom of the page there, Cortana uh, Analytics is really how we turn all of that data into actual information which can then be consumed by the decision makers throughout your business. Oh, and I should mention, uh, we will also be talking briefly about a business-to-business -business storefront. Um, what is interesting is that most companies have offerings, or several other competitors' or companies have offerings to solve the business-to-consumer challenge, uh, but they have discounted or not fully appreciated uh, the business-to-business -business side uh, of the transaction. So what this allows us to do is to have, like, let's say if you're a medium-sized manufacturer and maybe you're uh, producing tennis shoes, if you have your own uh, branded stores, then you are, in fact, a retailer. But you also are going to sell those items wholesale to other retailers, major department stores, and on and on. And you want to be able to offer them um, volume discounting, uh, discounted on pricing if they pay within a net 30 days, all of those other kinds of things. And so there's an entirely different side of the business, which is the business-to-business -business piece. Uh, and we're actually implementing that now for a, small, for a company out of Australia. Uh, and I'll be able to show you uh, how that's going and how uh, you interact with it. All right. So again, a truly integrated solution. Uh, so what this means is that all of the data and all of the um, uh, transactions, all of the inventory, all the consumables, everything can be tracked within a single system. And it sounds like a lot, uh, but because of the way the system's been designed, because of the robustness of AX, uh, we're actually able to present it in a really reasonable way where your accounts payable, accounts receivable, individuals, all the people that really make the business run, including the on-floor uh, sales associates, really have access to all that information. Uh, we also have the ability to accept payments uh, through credit cards, uh, Apple Pay, uh, PayPal, and on and on, uh, and those offerings will only expand in time as uh, a digital, new digital currencies come online and that kind of thing. All right. Right, and then differentiating features. So I'm not going to read through all of these, but we already mentioned the business-to-business -business piece, uh, the omni-channel piece, uh, and also the best-in-class single view of the customer, and we'll be showing that again in just a moment. Okay, and then finally, uh, here we have a, another map uh, that shows all of the uh, corporate offices and other locations for the Sonata present. All right, so at this point, I would ask if anybody had any questions, and if you do not, uh, then I will continue on uh, and move into the actual demonstration of the system itself. Uh, again, I don't think you have the ability to uh, comment uh, through audio, but if there are any questions, just go ahead and write those or type those into the uh, question and answer uh, portion of your screen on the bottom right-hand side, uh, and I'll be able to answer those in due time. Okay. So now that we're done with the PowerPoint portion of the discussion, we'll move into the actual demonstration. So what you're looking at here is actually a live instance of Dynamics AX uh, or Dynamics, uh, depending on what time you read the marketing material. But this is actually AX7 or the newest version of AX. Uh, our particular instance is located here in Atlanta, although this is offered uh, through Microsoft's cloud uh, Azure offering uh, as a total cloud solution. So anything that you're going to see could actually be placed or hosted uh, in the Microsoft cloud uh, which has significant advantages where you don't have to worry about local storage or out downtime and all of those other things. Uh, if you have any questions about Azure and the pricing and how all of that works out, uh, we're more than happy to get into that, uh, but that's actually not the topic for today's discussion, so we're going to get back into AX. So, as I mentioned, this is a live instance of AX, and then we'll see on another tab here, we actually have our brick and click solution. So what this really is is a website or e-commerce solution that our customer Max will use to interact with the retailer. 
So what he's going to do is go through and make a couple, pick a couple items for purchase, and then he's going to go in the store and pick them up, as we talked about. And then finally here, this other tab, excuse me, you see Microsoft MPAWS, or Modern Point of Sale System, and we've already logged in as Alexander. Uh, it's a good store associate running the cashier here, and we'll be able to, talk to uh, interact with Max and make sure he pays for his uh, item that he decides to purchase. All right, but first, before Max has run through his day, he's actually going to be on his mobile device. So with any luck here, you should be looking at the mobile device uh, on the screen. And what this is, is I have a Samsung tablet, but it could be an in or, uh, Apple device or anything else. And we actually have installed the Brick and Click uh, application to this tablet, and we've already signed in as Max. So here's Max, and he's going to start his day. He would say he's a good consumer, so he's not going to drive and shop at the same time. So we'll just pretend that he's on the bus on his way to work, and he's actually looking for a couple items. So maybe he's going on a trip here in a couple weeks, and he wants to uh, be able to have a tablet to take with him. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and choose a tablet for purchase, and we'll see how that item is then added to the cart. And I will say that this, of course, is a live demonstration of a live system, so of course it's going to take a few moments more than I would hope it would, um, but there we go. So now the system's up, and we're looking at all the tablets and things that are available. Now one thing I skipped over, which I shouldn't have, and I'm sorry for that, is that what you were looking at on the front page actually was a recommendation from the system uh, based on his previous purchases and also uh, purchases of people who um, have a, let's say, similar demographic and also have a similar purchase history to him. So our system uh, actually comes with a uh, intelligent recommendation engine that's embedded within it uh, in order to give people those, uh, those options for things they're likely to purchase. Uh, in, in, a, in, a, in another sense, this is not unlike uh, the recommendation engine that's running in Amazon. If you uh, typically scroll to the bottom of the page on Amazon after you bought spark plugs or whatever else it is, uh, typically they give you recommendations for people who also bought what you just did or are looking to add it to your cart also purchase these things. And so we're running, uh, it's not exactly the same, but it is a recommendation engine that can fill those needs for people. Uh, and again, this isn't, uh, or I should say, the idea in giving those recommendations isn't simply to make or to encourage people to purchase more, although that's exactly what we want them to do. It's really to fulfill their customer shopping experience. We don't want people to not get the things that they want and need at their first run. Uh, we want them to be able to shop with confidence and know that the system and that uh, the retailer will actually be able to provide them the things that they want and need. So anyway, moving on. So let's just say that Max here wants to purchase this uh, M500 tablet. So all we're going to do is click on Add to Cart, and then some details of the actual tablet itself will come up. Now, in this instance, I could have chosen any of them or any of the items listed on the page, but I'm going to pick a black tablet, and I'm going to click on Add to Cart. So in a few seconds here, if you look up at the top, you actually see this small shopping cart. And what we'll do, yep, and there it went. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, uh, but there's a small number one that popped up. And just as you would expect or anticipate, this means that we've moved our item into the shopping cart. Right? And we'll bring that up here in a second. And you see that the tablet has been added, and it gives us all kinds of options for picking it up in store, home delivery, and all of that kind of stuff. Well, let's just say that Max has continued uh, on his day, and he's moved through uh, you know, into his office. And again, he's a great employee, so not that anybody would ever do this. Let's say that Max brings up his um, the e-commerce site on his desktop or his laptop or whatever it may be. So if you notice at the moment, there's not an item in the cart here. But if we quickly refresh the page, we'll actually see that that same item has been added to the cart. And there, again, I don't know what the resolution is on your screen, but we show that there's a number one here up at the top. Uh, and that way, we know that Max actually has the thing in the cart. So again, Max is headed out on a road trip. So let's see what else you think he could possibly need. Let's just say for our argument's sake that he wants to get a laptop for whatever reason. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, choose a laptop of our uh, decision, and then add that to the cart. And then once we do that, we'll actually transition into the cart itself and be able to talk about a few other options that are available. So again, just for argument's sake, we'll pick a random um, item on the list here, and we'll end up purchasing that. Now, if you see on the screen on the left-hand side, or before it changed, we actually have the option uh, to uh, sort by price, sort by color, sort by any number of attributes that could be thought of 
in this particular instance, in this particular retailer uh, or setup, it's actually we're looking at electronics. So it could be screen size, it could be storage, it could be any other attribute. Uh, but just as you would think, we can set those things up. If it's closed, it could be by size, start with uh, men's and women's apparel, uh, tennis shoes, running shoes, hiking shoes, you, know, you name it. Um, all of those things can be pre-configured. Um, now, I will apologize. We uh, just refreshed this site, so now I have to click on show all content here. So it'll take a second for the page to refresh. Uh, but once it does that, we'll move forward and complete the transaction here for our friend Max. Okay. So there we brought it up. Again, we're going to side on the color black, and then we're going to click Add to Cart. Yep, and there we go. So once this item is added to the cart, we're going to go into the cart itself and then talk about how we're going to uh, ship these things, or actually, we're going to have Max decide he's going to pick up one of these items in the store uh, instead of actually having it shipped to his house. Oh, so we actually added two. Uh, I think because I clicked on that twice because uh, the screen didn't move fast enough. So what we can do now is we'll just remove one of these items to get back to our storyline, and it'll bring up the cart uh, with the actual two items instead of three. So while this is thinking, you'll actually see that we also have prices that are, or items that are on discount. Um, Dynamics AX uh, for retail actually comes with a number of pricing schemes that are already available just out of the box. Uh, but our developers have worked through with another of our other retailers, and we now offer 40 plus or more uh, possible combinations of discounts. Uh, most retailers will offer 10% off for loyalty programs, or if you open a new credit card, you can get 10% off up to $2,000, which is what some of the home improvement retailers here in the U.S. do, uh, and on and on. Uh, and so what I'm really saying is that we have a, or pre-configured all of the, or almost all of the possible combinations for discount schemes that you can imagine. And what this really does is help save you on development costs when we go in and actually do an installation of this system. So in this particular case, you can see that both of these items were 10% off. So you actually have the you saved option here or display here. Right, so let's say that Max is going to be going on a trip. And so he wants to be able to take this tablet with him. But let's just say that for whatever reason, maybe this is a heavier laptop, he doesn't want to take it with him. So we're going to decide to use the pick and store option and then select the store for the tablet. In this particular instance, we're going to look uh, at a zip code that's 77056, uh, and then we're going to find a store that's within that particular zip code. We also, uh, in the near future, will be able to do this um, kind of geolocation. So we'll be able to search for the store that's nearest to the person or nearest to the device that's being used. And this is both on the mobile device and on the desktop. Uh, but just for simplicity's sake, we stuck with just searching for the, um, uh, by the zip code. So now that we found this store that's in Houston, we can select Pickup in Store, and we see that we have Houston selected as the store for pickup. And at this point, Max is going to proceed to checkout. Now, I know that um, the typical way or typical method of payment in the U.S. these days is predominantly credit cards, checks not so much anymore, and certainly cash if you're in an in-store environment. In this particular case, Max is going to be using uh, something that's kind of rarely used in the U.S., uh, and that is he's going to be using cash on delivery. And I'll explain that in just a moment. I should also call out here that we have the opportunity to pick up different addresses. So if you wanted to, for example, uh, again, similar to Amazon, have a, uh, a gift sent to a friend or maybe it's Christmas coming up or Thanksgiving or birthdays or whatever that is, uh, the system can be set up on a line-by-line -line basis for each item to be able to split those things out so that each one could have a different location. So, for example, if you wanted the first two items on a list to go to your parents in Utah, you could do that, and the next one to Florida, and on and on. Uh, we're kind of unique in the ability to split orders in that particular way. Uh, and again, that's available uh, because we're using Dynamics AX, uh, and again, with some custom work on top of it. So at this point, we'll click Proceed to Pay. As I mentioned, Max is going to use cash on delivery. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that, or he's going to do that, rather, is that I want to show you how the process actually goes. Uh, when we go through in order to make the uh, ultimately pay the per, pay for the items uh, in the store when he picks them up. All right, so now we'll bring up proceed to pay, and hopefully this will move forward in just a moment. So you bear with me with the live uh, demonstration. Yeah.
All right, great. So now we've moved on to the payment screen. So as I mentioned, we have a number of different ways we can accept payments for items, being internet banking, credit cards, debit cards, cash on delivery, e-wallets of many kinds, uh, including the consumption of loyalty points, uh, which you can consume and then burn or redeem at a rate to be determined by the retailer. But in this instance, we're just going to pick cash on delivery because we're actually going to go into the store itself and pay for our line item or our item uh, in the store. And then all I did is click on submit order. So once this actually processes, we'll actually get a confirmation number. You'll see me go up onto the screen, highlight that number, and then we actually have to do a couple things within Dynamics itself. The stuff that we're going to do or the actions we're going to take are things that would be completed in a batch job or run automatically on three to five to ten minute increments, depending on how the particular uh, uh, client wanted the system to be set up. But in, all, in order to show you exactly how the system works, we left all of these things manual. So we go back into it just to show you our interaction with AX. Oops. So if you see here, and I'll highlight it very quickly, this is our actual confirmation number. And so Max uh, would actually get an email confirmation saying that his item has been ordered and that one of those is going to be picked up in store. And this is his effective receipt. And we also see the pickup store address for this one item. So now that Max has completed that, uh, now we're going to transition to be the actual retail environment uh, or to be into AX itself. So what we're going to do is go into distribution schedule and we're going to run what's called a P job in order to have the information move from the e-commerce site into AX itself and vice versa. So we'll come down here, select this uh, job and then run now. Now again, uh, this is something that wouldn't be interacted with or wouldn't require interaction from a person, let's say at the corporate headquarters. But we do this in order to, or we, we've left it manual in order to show you exactly where the interactions are between AX and the e-commerce solution. So that job is completed and run. And now we need to go to one more place and synchronize the online orders. If you're familiar with AX, which we all should be, you notice that we were in USRT, so we're actually in the US retail uh, arm of this particular company. Uh, and we're going to run the Contoso online store for synchronization, and we'll click OK. And this may take just a few moments, but once it processes it, uh, it'll actually return to the screen we were previously on. So again, it takes just a few moments, uh, and we should move on to the next screen. There we go. So now the job is run in the background, uh, and Dynamics has brought you back to the home landing page. So Max, being a good guy, has moved forward in his life, and now he's actually made his way to that Houston store, so he wants to pick up those items that we were looking at. As, we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, this is actually a MPAWS, or modern point of sale, uh, where you can actually, this is uh, how you would interact with the cash register within the store. So we have our store associate named Alexander who's logged in. He has a till and all the things that go along with that. And all he needs to do is find the order in order to, the order in order to help Max uh, pick up his one item. So we, if you remember, we copied the item or the confirmation number earlier. We copied it and we'll paste it here. And uh, what will happen is we'll actually bring up the order uh, that Max, Max had put in earlier. And there we go. So we see his original total. And we see a little bit more information about them. Uh, and one of the reasons to do that is actually in the store, you'd want to make sure that you double check, you know, depending on your uh, loss prevention policies and that uh, store operations policies, to make sure that you're actually uh, providing the product to the person that uh, was going to per was originally purchased it and not some uh, man in the middle uh, type of scenario. So now that we've selected our line for Max and his order, we're going to select picking and packing down at the bottom. I should note that this is actually all touch enabled, and so if you actually uh, had a tablet or Surface, you could run all of these things right on that uh, tablet. Uh, in this particular instance, I'm using my laptop, uh, so we're just going to click on Pickup, and we'll progress to the next screen. Okay, in this instance, it says no hardware was active on, uh, was available, and we know that because I don't have a register uh, exactly in front of me, we're simulating that, so we just click OK uh, and move forward. Right, so now if you remember, in his order, he actually had two things. We can go back and look at it, uh, the tablet and the laptop. 
but only one of them was going to be picked up in the store. And so that one line item actually shows up. The other item that was going to be shipped to his home address or address of his choosing doesn't show up here uh, because he's only going to pick up the one thing that he designated for in the store. And again, we want that because we don't want to have a loss prevention issue uh, if we're uh, providing items to customers who haven't paid for them appropriately. So down at the bottom, we click pick up. And it should move forward. Yep, and so we now move into the traditional uh, cash register. And again, we see both of the items that he had uh, identified for purchase, but there's a quantity of zero on the one that he actually is going to have shipped to the house. So we've picked the item, the store associate has gone and found it, brought it up to the service desk or wherever within the store, and now we want to be able to process a payment so that Max can get on his way and go on his road trip with his new uh, tablet. And he's a good guy, so we're just going to say that he's going to pay in cash, uh, and he's going to have exact change, which is awfully kind of him. And what we're going to do here is just see that we'll be able to process this payment uh, and run it through. Uh, just as I mentioned a little bit earlier on the online portion or the e-commerce solution, we can process different payment types. This includes all credit cards, of course, uh, checks. Everybody likes cash, uh, but then also um, uh, online payments or Apple Pay or all those other things can also be configured. Right, so change due, again, because they had perfect change, which is awfully kind, and we can close. And now we show uh, the final screen for the cash register here, which is that the customer picked the item up. Uh, and then we can close this transaction and move on to helping our next, our next customer. Okay. So again, in this particular scenario, because all of these tools are tied together through Dynamics AX, we moved from the e-commerce solution actually into Dynamics itself, or from the mobile device to the e-commerce solution to Dynamics itself to show that the jobs are being run in the background and a little bit about how the system works. And ultimately into the store itself where Max is able to pick up the item he's ordered. I should say that we do have a large partner or a client that's in Europe who is actually using a portion of the system right now. Uh, and in that case, uh, you can actually place your grocery order ahead of time, decide when you're going to come pick it up, the store associate inside of an associate inside of the brick and mortar store will walk through the store, effectively do the picking and packing or shopping for you, and then bring it to the front of the store where all you literally have to do is walk in, check in with your mobile device, they scan it, you provide your uh, information, and then you walk out with prepackaged groceries that are just ready to go. And uh, that's a terrific example of how. And uh, this really, the system truly integrates all of those options and ultimately provides a great customer service uh, to the consumer that's coming into the building. All right. So um, at this point, I'll stop for just a second. And then if anybody has any questions, I'd ask you to type them into that comment uh, or Q&A box. Uh, and, I'm, and then we'll uh, get started here in just a moment. So if there aren't any questions, the next piece we're going to move into, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a live solution to show you uh, at the moment, uh, but we'll be able to go through uh, what's effectively or would be effect effectively would be a customer's experience in the store uh, on a mobile device. And we have several uh, retailers here, or at least a couple large scale ones, that give you the option to actually use your mobile device to create a shopping list uh, which you then will display uh, or show to the cashier and then walk out of the building. And what this really does is allows uh, expedited checkout or some parts of the world call it queue busting, uh, but allows you to fill up your shopping cart, you scan everything that goes into the cart with your mobile device. Those devices are added to what's really a suspended transaction within the uh, point of sale system. And then it creates a uh, SKU that can be scanned at a cash register that cashier goes through and counts to make sure that all of the items that are in your cart are actually what you put on your list. Because again, we do have loss prevention considerations or things to consider. Uh, and then you pay for it and then move on. Uh, additionally, there are other retailers, uh, one in particular, uh, that has the ability where you literally pay for everything just on your mobile device, having scanned all the items in your cart. It creates a receipt. The receipt is sent to the store. And as you're walking out the door, 
uh, from this particular retailer, you actually uh, will check that receipt, they'll count the number of items in your cart, and then you go on your way. In that instance, you're not required to carry any cash or, uh, or checks or any other stuff with you. You're actually doing all of the um, uh, transaction in your mobile device uh, as you move forward. So what we have here is actually a video of that process that's going to happen. And I'll walk through it and pause it and then actually describe it to you uh, as the video plays. I do have to apologize if you see in the bottom right-hand corner this mirror, upgrade mirror. Uh, mirror is the program that was used to create this recording uh, and to get this particular mobile device onto the screen. And unfortunately, we weren't able to get the upgrade done, so we, uh, we wouldn't have to look at this nice advertisement at the bottom. Uh, but do your best to ignore it uh, as you can. And again, I'm sorry that it's there. So what's going to happen here is we're again on a mobile device and the person is going to go through. In this case, it's Abu Sheikh. So we have his name and he's logged in. And he's actually going to select an item uh, and add it to his cart or add it to uh, what's effectively a wish list. All right. And so he's selected a tablet and a laptop. And he has his list of shopping list here of electronics. Much like we did with uh, Max a few moments ago, he selected two items to add to his list. This list could be called anything. It doesn't have to be electronics. It could be Christmas gifts for mom or anything else or, you know, fall shopping list. Uh, anything we have the ability to create multiple lists uh, for later purchases. Okay. So we move through the process. Uh, and this is where he starts the screen recording. Okay. And we're actually going to select uh, a store to do the shopping in. So if you notice what's happening is he's actually selected a store, and this is again another zip code, I believe in New York, Manhattan. Uh, and he's going to choose a store to do the shopping in. So here, um, the actual customer is coming in with the mobile device in hand and then choosing the store that they're going to be doing shopping in. Uh, in future iterations of this um, system, we'll actually be able to the uh, mobile device will know where it is based on geolocation so that you won't have to do this. If you're in the store, uh, effect, like physically with your phone, the phone itself will know that. Uh, an additional tie-in is with um, Bluetooth pucks or other smart devices or you know, Internet of Things devices that will uh, send real-time notifications to consumers as they're in the stores uh, as appropriate and as set up by the, um, uh, by the client. So here he'll select the actual zip code and we'll run through and this uh, run through the, the next steps. If you saw just a moment ago, uh, he actually decided to shoot to shop in store four. And I'm sorry it went a little fast here, so we'll pause again. So here he selected the store. In this case it'll be store four, and then he'll continue his shopping. All right, so I'll be shake clicks yes, and then he actually decides by clicking on the link for the electronics up here to add these items to his cart. Effectively, what this means is it's not the online cart that we've been talking about previously. This is actually a physical cart in a physical brick and mortar store where he's going to use this system in order to cut the queue or in order to cut the line at the front of the store. So uh, in our busy shopping or holiday time that's coming up, a system like this would be exceptionally uh, valuable uh, for a retailer. For me personally, you know, typical guy, I don't want to spend a lot of time in the mall if I don't have to. And if there's any way that I could save time, I would more than likely dedicate uh, at least part of my fall shopping to a place where I could cut the line at the end and just get in and out and on my way. All right, so we'll hit play again. So he selected electronics. He's going to add, I believe, one of these items to his cart. Yep. And that product update failed, just had to do with the colors uh, there. So he selects black. Yep, and then he's added that item to the cart. So the next thing that's going to happen is he's going to physically pick up an item in the store and then scan it using the camera that's embedded in the tablet or phone that he's actually using. So we'll scan the barcode, add that item to the list, and then present it ultimately to the cashier, or to the cashier uh, in order to close out the transaction and proceed along the way. So there you should see the, zip, uh, the um, UPC code, right? So we scan that using a tablet. The item is added to the cart. Oh. And now you'll see he's added this litware cables to his purchase. But in the store, he literally went up, scanned the back of the carton that had the uh, USB cable. And now he's going to proceed up to the front cash register. OK. 
Okay, so he'll click on checkout down at the bottom. And then what's happened is that the system has created a QR code or another barcode, and this can actually be scanned by the point of sale system uh, within the store in order to enable that fast checkout. So exactly as we mentioned, uh, any consumer now can walk into the store, scan an item, go up to the front, cut the whole line, because now you don't have to have the challenge uh, of multiple people handling the same item. So if you're going through a grocery store line, you've already taken one step of moving the item from the shelf into your cart. Do you really need to go through another step or multiple steps in order to have all of those items bagged at the cash, by the cashier and then by the bagger and then in order to go to the payment uh, process? Uh, if you were able to implement our system uh, through brick, brick and click, you actually could skip, if the consumer wanted to, you could skip that whole bagging process and just let them proceed out to their vehicle or uh, on their way as they chose to. So really a great way to offer an additional service to consumers to provide that um, customer service experience, which is what they are all really looking for. Okay. And now that we've gone through this portion, again, I'll ask if anybody has any questions. Uh, and if you don't, we'll take just another second, and then we'll get into the next portion of the uh, discussion. And then, as mentioned in the beginning, we're going to um, uh, uh, have an open Q&A session at the end if anybody has any additional uh, questions. Okay. So a couple have come in here. Sure, sure, please. Uh, the, the first one is, uh, can you have multiple prices for the same product depending on channel? So, for example, it was raised one price for collect, and another price for delivery without a separate delivery charge? So the short answer there is yes. Uh, all of the items, in fact, you could have different prices for the same item in different locations per your preference. Uh, and you have item groups uh, and sale item groups and different sale levels. Uh, and really there's uh, almost an infinite possible combinations of uh, if you, let's say you had delivery fees that were added on to an item in one location but weren't in another, uh, all of those things can be considered. So absolutely, yes. I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have an example to show uh, of that at the moment, uh, but it certainly is something that we could follow up with the person with in order to describe it more at another time. And is the on-hand inventory checked real-time at the time of ordering back to AX on-hand stock? So uh, as long as, um, let's see, so for ordering, so this is procurement, right? The item won't actually be, you can change, there's configurations you can change. Uh, you can count inventory as available to say upon purchase or upon delivery into the actual distribution center or physical warehouse if you wanted to. So I think most retailers would actually not want to have items available to say that aren't physically uh, available for purchase by customers. Uh, but depending on the particular type of retail or a particular type, type of business you're running, you can configure that either way. So you can sell things that are not physically in your inventory if you decide to configure AX with that in that way. And I think that can be even set, uh, although I'd have to get back to you, I believe that can be set down to the item level, uh, but I'm, and I'm pretty sure it can be done uh, for the category. So let's, let's say you, again, to use tennis shoes, uh, you wanted to be able to sell tennis shoes before they were actually in your distribution center, uh, knowing that they were coming on a shipment, like let's say in the next two weeks. Uh, that is a configuration that you could go through uh, or that we could go through uh, with the client and actually uh, make that determination on a, on a per item basis. So again, yes, you can do that. Okay, uh, those are uh, all the questions we have for now. Okay, great. So uh, next up, and I think we've got about 15 minutes left here, and we'll try to maybe get you some of your afternoon or morning back, depending on where you are. Uh, but something that's unique to us and we wanted to highlight here is actually our B2B business-to-business -business solution. And what this really is is uh, a series of sites uh, and lists uh, that will show um, uh, how a company, and this is being in installed now, has the ability to have both a consumer-facing site and also a business-facing site, so you can make sure you take advantage of those hosted orders uh, and discounts that are uh, available to people who are doing those bulk purchases. So list the key features here. I'm not going to read through all of them, but I will highlight, um, uh, you know, automatic calculation, delivery charges, and taxes is a, can be a huge deal and complication, especially when you're dealing with taxes for different locales. And so we have the ability to, uh, to, um, to do that, uh, as well as an order and pre-order history. 
So um, if you are, let's say you're consuming 100 of an item every month and you want to be, be able to keep track of those orders in time, so the end of 10 months you should have 1,000 of them before they went out the door for whatever reason, uh, you actually be able to track all of those things to a line item basis so that you really have a good, accurate uh, inventory inventory count and you know exactly what you can provide to your customers uh, or to your retail locations. Um, back to kind of the second question that was asked, and now that I'm thinking about it, um, because all of the information for um, inventory within the entirety of the system is uh, located within Dynamics AX, it's all real time. So you can do a cycle count or item count or uh, uh, inventory adjustment in the store, and as soon as that uh, is confirmed within the system, then the entirety of the system, so all of the stores will know that the inventory has changed. So if you're on one side of town and you have a customer that wants a particular item, but you show zero inventory in your store, you can go into the system and look at the real-time inventory at another location across town or even in your warehouse. Uh, we actually did a walkthrough of a local retailer here, I should say a national retailer here, uh, where if you actually wanted to purchase an item that wasn't on the shelf, or let's say they only had five and you needed ten of them, they would actually have to call back to their warehouse in order to determine if they really had that item or not. Uh, in this day and age, being you know having to take that additional time uh, and then having to have those additional where, um, employees in order to staff the phones and man those warehouses is really cost prohibitive. And so what, we, what they really need is a system much like ours that allows you to have that real-time inventory knowledge uh, so you know exactly what you're getting uh, and what you have available for sale. Right. So now back to the business business solution. So again, uh, I don't want to read through all these items, uh, but what we're going to do is just show some of the sites. And again, this isn't uh, live per se. This is actually a PowerPoint presentation I'll be clicking through or uh, rolling through but just gives you an idea of what we can do for you uh, as a potential client, right? So uh, this uh, is a high-end fashion or a sports, uh, I should say, women's athletic sports company. Uh, and so you're going to see those pictures and all of the other kind of stuff and details that go along with it. But what this is is their, um, their business to business solution. You register for an account uh, because it is business to business and you want to qualify those customers. Uh, it's not an instantaneous approval, but there is a uh, automated or semi-automated approval process that will happen in the background. Uh, if you're uh, trading on credit or allowing um, uh, a, another company to have, let's say, 30, 60, 90 day net uh, payments and that kind of thing, uh, you can, uh, all of those options have been established and would just need to be configured within the system. So here we can look at all the different options. You'll see that there's pricing changes. So depending on what particular item you're buying, now this includes all of the sizes, all of the colors, and all of the other configurations for that particular item. Uh, and we can, as a um, client of this company, you can go through and make those uh, choices. So then you can do your bulk ordering and receive those additional discounts for, let's say, buying over 5,000 items in a month or buying single purchase orders over a certain weight or any of those other combinations for bulk item discounts that are given to your business consumers. Uh, due to their purchase volume. All right, so again, we mentioned, uh, or I mentioned um, the configuration. So again, this says the size, quantity, and then you add to the basket. So we've pre-configured it to be able to do all of those, to uh, consider all of those options. All right, and here, if you see on, on the left-hand side, we have the, the two different tops. Uh, one with small, one is X, or uh, large. Uh, and we have in a person, or a, again, a, uh, another business has the ability to purchase as many or as few of these as they needed to uh, and can run through it. I should also say that the system can be used as a, um, in a call center. Uh, if you're the type of company that actually has a, a you know, medium, small size, or uh, actually any size call center, you can use this business to business option in order to provide uh, home screens uh, for your, um, your call center employees. So they don't actually have to interact with AX. They're more than welcome to, and we can certainly do that. Uh, but a lot of times it's a lot easier, especially if you have pictures and other data and other information that you want to have or be presented uh, with the system to the ultimate consumer. So we'll move through. And a typical checkout process, as you would imagine. And again, uh, pre-ordering. Ah, we do have the ability to pre-order. So um, let's say you're producing an item, but you're also acting as a retailer. 
And so uh, much to the first question that came up, I believe, about when the inventory was in stock. In this instance, we're allowing consumers, in this instance, we're allowing business consumers to pre-order items that aren't actually in their inventory. So we do have the ability to, let's say, a new T-shirt is coming out for Christmas. We want to add that to our inventory but not actually make it physically available. We can allow it to be active within the system so that you can pre-order those items so that once they do land on your shores or on your cross-stock facility or wherever, uh, you can actually uh, not lose those sales because the item isn't physically in the warehouse yet. So we do have the ability for pre-ordering. All right, and then a checkout, just as you would imagine. All right, and what this shows is an order history. So many times, uh, large-scale retailers will have thousands and thousands of lines of orders, uh, and we've actually set it up so that you can relatively easily uh, pull up any of those orders uh, for any reason if you needed to go back and make sure that you actually got what you had ordered and on and on, uh, and so it's relatively easy for the uh, other business consumers to see what information or what they've requested in the past. This is especially uh, important if you're looking at, um, um, let's say, seasonal items or items that are only available or, or typically bought in a certain time of year. You want to go back and purchase those same type items again. It's very easy to go back and sort by date and uh, on and on in order to make sure that you're ordering the, the things that your customers ultimately want and need. All right. And then another screenshot of the accounts. And I'm going to skip through. Great. So now, I think this is going to be almost the last thing here as we run out of time, but what we call customer 360, so or a 360-degree view of the customer. And really, and I'll let you read through the slide. I'm not going to read it to you. Um, but what this really means is that because all of the data, all the information is all kept within or sourced from Dynamics, uh, we have the ability to look at consumers and look at their purchase history and, in, and information uh, in a way that many other people do not. And we really think that this is a differentiator that sets us up far and above uh, other uh, offerings in the same uh, business. And we think it's exceptionally important to know what your customers not only uh, have purchased, but have a propensity to purchase. So for example, if you wanted to know what a certain type of demographic all had in their, uh, not in their baskets at the moment, but maybe they marked it on a favorite, we can run several reports and see where those items uh, have been sitting in their, uh, let's say, future purchase category so that maybe um, uh, we could provide a direct mailer to the person or, you know, email marketing option uh, where we could offer slight discount or other incentives in order to convert these customers from potential customers to actual customers in order to increase uh, our sales, which, of course, is one of the things that we're really looking for, All right? Um, or Retina is what uh, is actually the uh, engine that runs all of these things. And I'm sorry that this is a static uh, display uh, at the moment, a screenshot. Um, but uh, if someone was interested in this and wanted to see what was really available, all of this information is actually sourced off of a live AX instance. Uh, and so as our fictitious people go through and make their purchases, uh, all of this data will update uh, in order to give us a constant running um, view, not just of what we sold, but really about the customer. So if you, for example, knew that every, you know, once a year they were purchasing an additional, like let's say bicycle helmets, and you noticed that the bicycle helmets were increasing in size every year, you could infer that the people had children of a certain age and a certain, you know, uh, with certain interests, and you could make sure that you were actually sending them the right uh, marketing information so that they were actually an informed customer and knew exactly what they were getting and what they wanted and what they got. Yep. Okay, and yep. we also, uh, because of the system and its um, uh, how it all ties together, we also have very detailed information on order history. And so what you're looking at here is where information uh, or data about a particular customer was in Microsoft CRM after having been entered on the website, and we actually have the ability to to piece and parse and search and deep dive and all the other things that are so important about knowing your customers through the uh, dynamic CRM uh, instance. And so we also have the ability to do that. Uh, and I know that we are at five minutes to the hour, and I'm sure you could probably tell that I could go on and on and on about the system and how great it is and how important it is, not just to us, uh, but as to you, the potential consumer of it and user of it. 
but at this point, I think I'll stop uh, and say thank you so much for your time and uh, wherever you are. And uh, if you do have any additional questions, uh, please post those into the Q&A section, uh, and then do let me know if there's anything listed there. Uh, I'm not seeing any other questions at this point. Okay. So uh, with that, I think I'll cut you back a few moments of your day. If there aren't any questions now, uh, please feel free to reach out to us at any time, and I really appreciate it. All right. Well, Andrew, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. And. And with that, uh, we will wrap up today's session. We have recorded it. We'll be making that available as well, so do look for an update. And, uh, and have a great day, everybody. That concludes the event.